Effects pedals and acoustic guitar may seem like oil and water. And don't get me wrong, some effects are not a match for an acoustic. Reverb is not one of those effects. Reverb can add a whole new dimension to your acoustic guitar sound. And on today's show, we'll do a little bit of a Reverb 101, and I'll be showing you some of my favorite reverb pedals. Hey, TAC family, this is episode 267 of the Acoustic Tuesday Show, a show packed full of inspiration and fun designed to help you get more progress, fulfillment, and joy from your acoustic guitar journey. Throughout today's episode, I'll be sprinkling in some acoustic news you can use, which includes some Halloween ideas for next year, a holy pickup installation guide, and much more. Plus, you'll be meeting TAC family member Eric, who's going to share some pieces of his guitar journey that will certainly help you out, especially if you've ever injured one of your fretting hand digits. But first, let's walk into the wonderful world of reverb. Now, I should start out by apologizing. Yes, yes, I still have a cold. We're on week number three. The whole family's on week number three, but we're getting better. Now, I sound horrible. I sound the worst I've ever sounded. However, I can tell you, I feel the best I've ever felt. It's kind of weird, but I think we're on the up and up. That being said, let's talk about reverb. Okay, so reverb, what is it? Let's all get on the same page. You've likely heard this term thrown around, but I want to make sure we have the same level of understanding. If you've ever sung in the shower, that's reverb. The bathroom is full of hard surfaces, uh, tile, you've got a mirror, you've likely got a hard ceiling, etc. The sound reflects off of that and makes you sound almost bigger than you are. That is reverb. Essentially, it's the reflection of sound. You can have reflection of sound in a small room, like a bathroom, or you can have reflection of sound in a large room, like a, a cathedral, for example. Now, what does reverb do for your acoustic guitar? Well, just like your voice, it makes your guitar sound bigger. It makes your guitar sound lush. It makes your guitar sound full. Now, one of the things that's interesting is if, if you've ever plugged in your guitar without any reverb whatsoever, it sounds extremely dry. It sounds almost fake, almost sterile. And then when you add the reverb, all of a sudden it comes alive. It sounds organic. It sounds full. It sounds like a real guitar. That's what reverb offers. So should you use it? Yes. In subtle ways, you should use reverb all the time. If you ever want to douse your guitar signal in reverb, you can certainly do that. It sounds cool. But make sure you do it tastefully because things can get, well, they can get a little weird and spacey, which isn't bad. Just don't do that all the time if that's not what you're going for. If you're going for a natural sound, you want to use reverb subtly and almost sparingly just to give your acoustic guitar a little splash, if you will. Now, I want to get to uh, some, some of the basic controls of reverb, and I want to share with you some of my favorite reverb pedals, some which are basic utility reverbs, and others are... Um, We'll call them experimental, goofy, spacey reverbs. They're all very useful, and I can't wait to share them with you. But let's talk about the basic controls. Uh, the basic controls of reverb, there are actually not that many. Um, different pedals uh, will have different controls, but essentially you're dealing with the same parameters. Um, some are a little bit more comprehensive than others. I'm going to use the LR Bags Align Series Reverb just to, to talk about the controls real quick because there's not a lot on here. Essentially, you have a general volume, which is the volume of your guitar's signal. You have the amount of reverb, which you can have a ton or just a subtle amount. I've, I've actually already talked about that before. You can have the tone. Do you want a darker sounding reverb? Do you want a more bright sounding reverb? Really depends on your style, and it really depends on what you like the sound of. None of these controls have a good setting or a bad setting. It's really just what you like, and then you have a decay. Now, a decay is essentially how long the reverb tail lasts. How long do you want that sound to continue on? Or how big of a room do you want your reverb to sound like? Or how big of a room 
do you want uh, uh, your acoustic guitar to uh, to fill up, if you will? Maybe that's not the best descriptor. Uh, essentially, how long of a tail do you want your reverb to have? And that's really pretty much it. Now there are other uh, other there are other subtle differences again, as I mentioned, between pedals, but essentially those are the parameters you're dealing with. Bottom line, if you get a reverb pedal, just start messing with the knobs, you'll, you'll essentially figure it out. And even if you don't know what they do, just turn them until you find something you like. That's kind of my MO when I approach a reverb pedal, because to be honest, I don't like reading instructions. I just like plugging things in and seeing how they sound. So yes, I'm a, a, a knob turner, if, if that's a category of a pedal lover. Uh, now, before we get into my favorite reverb pedals, do you need reverb? In my opinion, yes. If you have a pickup on your guitar, if you're plugging in, whether you're doing it at home on an amplifier, whether you're doing it at home plugging into a, 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 a DAW to record on your computer, or if you're playing live and you're plugging in your guitar direct, yes, you need reverb, period, plain and simple. And I mentioned this before. Without reverb, your guitar's signal sounds sterile. It sounds empty. It sounds almost fake. It sounds plastic. Whereas if you add a little bit of reverb, all of a sudden your guitar livens up. It sounds real again. It sounds darn near amazing. Uh, so yes, in my opinion, you absolutely need reverb all the time. It's one of those things you can leave on in the background that just sweetens up the tone a little bit. All that being said, let's dive into some of my favorite reverbs. I've got a whole pile of them right here next to me. So let me go ahead and uh, dig in. This first one we'll put in the experimental category. Hold on one sec. This first one comes from Earthquaker Devices and it's called the Afterneath. And I specifically got this pedal because it sounds absolutely bizarre. Uh, it functions as a great standard reverb, but the reason I got it and the reason I wanna share it with you is because it's experimental. There's this weird kind of modulation, this pitch modulation that can happen. There's weird, um, it almost feels like cavernous, not necessarily a standard room, but a weird, odd cavern type of situation. Um, it's really better off if you hear it. So let me go ahead and play through it so you can hear what it sounds like as opposed to me trying to describe it. Here's the Earthquaker Devices After Me. <laughs> The next reverb pedal, which is my absolute 100% favorite, is the Strymon Flint. Now, this pedal lives on my pedal board. I use it a ton. Uh, I use it on the Dobro specifically, but uh, since I can't really take it off my pedal board, I wanted to show it to you here. Uh, it's actually the one on uh, what would be uh, my bottom right, your bottom left. Uh, a great sounding reverb. It actually doubles as a tremolo pedal as well, but I'm just focusing on the reverb setting here. Uh, you've got a couple different styles of reverb and it's beautifully subtle. It's not an overpowering reverb, even on its most extreme settings. And I feel like it just sounds the most organic, at least in my opinion, it's, it's a great match for acoustic instruments. Although I think it was designed for electric guitar, it doesn't matter, acoustic works great through it and here's how it sounds. <laughs> up is the Collision Devices Black Hole Symmetry. This is a pedal from France. If you checked out the delay episode of Acoustic Tuesday, I featured this pedal on it, and uh, it has a wonderful reverb setting. Uh, this pedal actually has three different functionalities, a delay, a reverb, and a fuzz. Um, I think the reverb on this is beautiful. Um, I think this is a very space-themed pedal, and that's how I would describe the reverb as well. You can dial it in subtle, and it sounds great, 
or you can get experimental with it. I've really enjoyed getting experimental with this, and it's led to me playing guitar for a very long period of time because I kind of get lost in the different sounds you can generate. And that's one of the hidden bonuses of effects pedals and acoustic guitar. You kind of get lost in this new dimension of exploration, of exploration. Um, and this pedal certainly opens up that gateway. Here's how it sounds. for one pedal that does it all, this is the one for you, the Strymon Big Sky. You have beautifully natural reverbs and you also have these really odd reverbs. Uh, some of the settings include uh, Swell, Bloom, Cloud, Corral, Shimmer, Magneto, Nonlinear, and Reflections. Those are the more uh, experimental side of things. You also have the standard reverbs, uh, Room, Plate, Hall, Spring, etc. This is truly uh, an... an uh, Swiss Army Knife, an all-for-one type of reverb. Uh, it's a darn good reverb pedal and uh, one that, if you're only looking for one reverb for a, a vast variety of instruments, this is it. Um, it's about 379 bucks, not a cheap reverb, but an incredibly quality reverb. Here's how it sounds. so congested. I'm not even sure I mentioned the name of this. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. It's the Strymon Big Sky. Um, sorry if this is redundant, but I can't remember if I even said the name. So yeah, Strymon Big Sky, the all-for-one reverb. Uh, let's see, what's next on my list? Oh, you've seen this one before because this is the one that I've uh, gone over the controls of, the LR Bags Align Series Reverb. If you're looking for something simple, this is it. If, let me let me rephrase that. If you're looking for something simple that sounds really good and is a great match for an acoustic guitar, this is it. Quite simply, an effect made by an acoustic guitar pickup manufacturer um, is, is a match made in heaven. And this is just a fantastic reverb. Uh, let's go ahead and give it a listen.
finally, a pedal that gives you much more than you bargain for, the Fishman Tone Deck. I featured this in the delay episode. It has two reverb settings on it, so it's made the reverb episode as well. Uh, the parameters are very easy. Essentially, you have time, how small of a room, how big of a room, and then you have level, how much reverb you actually hear. But the reason I mention this pedal is because it's not just a reverb. Uh, it actually has some other effects as well, but it functions fantastically well as a DI. So if you're looking for something that does multiple functions and does multiple functions well, uh, the Fishman Tone Deck is something you should consider. Here's how it sounds. I want to move on to your first dose of acoustic news you can use, but first, uh, please chime in on this discussion. Do you use reverb on your acoustic guitar? And if so, what reverb do you use? Uh, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. And I should also be clear that obviously you'll need a pickup to use an effects pedal. And again, I just want to cite that the best pickups, in my opinion, to use with effects pedals are either an under the saddle piezo pickup or something like a, a bridge plate transducer, like a K and K pure mini or something like that. I feel like those offer a really direct signal that can be manipulated by the effects pedal in a, in a pretty uh, clean way. So uh, yeah, just keep that in mind uh, as you do your reverb pedal shopping. And uh, with that, let's move on to the first dose of acoustic news you can use, which actually mentions one of the pickups I just mentioned, although a, a more elaborate system. The k, &K Trinity system, which is a bridge plate transducer, including a microphone, and you can mix between the two signals. Now, this, this particular pickup system I've heard in person, and it's pretty fantastic. If you're looking for a, a clear, transparent acoustic tone, this one is it. Uh, it's quite beautiful, and um, it seems like it would be quite a hassle to install. But after I watched this video from Tom Sands, I thought to myself, I think I could do this. Because Tom Sands made a video that was pretty descriptive and uh, pretty explicit in how to in uh, include, how to install one of these pickups. So uh, let's take a quick look at a piece of this video. Before we drill this hole, I need to put a little center point on here. We're just gonna use this, uh, the tip of this brad point bit. And then, I've got this really nice stepped drill bit here. And just take care to make sure it's perfectly vertical and wish me Godspeed. Wait, is this the right guitar? Just kidding. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick this to the back of the upper transverse brace. And the upper transverse brace is the brace that is on your soundboard and it runs kind of just above your sound hole. Time to fit the golden discs of destiny to the bridge plate. So these pole pieces are literally getting glued to the soundboard. So we've got this, um, this is just a generic gel super glue. And what I like to do to aid in the, the process is to wet out a piece of kitchen tile with some super glue accelerator. Like get it pretty nice and wet. And then just dab that onto the bridge plate. I wanna get some of that accelerator onto the surface of the bridge plate. And that's gonna really help the super glue to go off nice and quickly once everything's in place. Let's go ahead and play a game. I feel like um, that horror movie, it's not Puppet Master, it's the dude with the, with the spirals on his cheeks with the little tricycle, dee 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 dee. Um, shoot, what's the name of that movie? It's, um, man, this cold is just fogging up my whole brain. I can't think or talk. Uh, Saw, it's Saw. Uh, yeah, I feel like that movie saw it. So, let, so let's play a game, not a creepy game. It's more of a guessing game. I'm gonna show you a picture and I want you to tell me who it is in the comments below. I'm not gonna give you the answer right now. I'll give it to you a little bit later on in the show, but I will give you some clues. So take a look at this picture 
And uh, let me give you some clues. This individual grew up in Eastern Kentucky. This individual started playing guitar when he was 12, but he did not focus on music until college. Obviously, this individual played football and took the Johnson Central Golden Eagles to the playoffs his senior year. Uh, so yeah, go ahead in the comments below. Let me know who you think that is, and I'll reveal it during your second dose of acoustic news you can use. But one more thing in this first dose, I found this, this Tony Rice quote on Instagram, and I just thought it was awesome, something worth sharing, and um, <laughs> it's just, it's great. I'm gonna try and read it, uh, given my current state of, of mental clarity and general congestion. I'm not sure how this is gonna go, but wish me luck. Tony Rice says the following. I do what I do because I love it. And when I do love it and like to do it, I do it. When I don't like it, I don't do it. <laughs> I just thought it was a cool turn of phrase and also um, kind of just a little, maybe a little indicator of when you love playing the acoustic guitar, you do it. When you don't love it, you don't do it. So bottom line, have fun. Make yourself love the acoustic guitar. I shouldn't say make yourself love it, but have fun. And when you have fun at something, you end up loving it. And when you love it, you do it, just like Tony Rice said. And I want you to play guitar as much as possible, and I want you to have fun, god darn it. Uh, so that's your first dose of acoustic news you can use. Now let's move on to meeting TAC family member Eric. Now Eric uh, is a TAC family member, and he attended a 90-day progress party uh, within TAC, something I hold every 90 days where I get a chance to talk about guitar routines, help the TAC family set goals, design their guitar routines, and I get a chance to actually talk to TAC family members. And this is where I spoke with Eric. Now I talked to him about his 90-day goal, and I thought it was really cool because he had said that his guitar routine and his experience has kind of been all over the place, but he's recommitted. He wants to take Fretboard Wizard over the next 90 days. And I thought this was so cool because it shows that when you're recommitting to something, when you're trying to dive back in, having a clear-cut mission, a clear-cut goal will help you pull in to your guitar routine. And that's exactly what Eric describes. Here's what he has to say. So I am working on uh, the new version of Fretboard Wizard. Uh, so that that came out at a good time for me. Um, I didn't I didn't jump on it the first time around, and um, you know was kind of off and on with TAC for maybe two or three years. Um, and, and so I figured I'll, I'll pull the trigger this time around because um, I think I'm you know maybe close to an intermediate level. But for for so many years, you know I've only I've only learned bits and pieces of songs and bits and pieces of music theory, and and I'm trying to learn. I've got so many gaps to fill and I'm trying to fill those gaps with, with the, mm. uh, you know, the music theory knowledge and then put it all together. And I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to the, the fretboard wizard and helping me to do that. I love that because you can sense Eric's excitement. He's excited to dive back in. He's excited to have a clear cut mission. Now, one of the other things that he mentioned when I was talking to him was uh, the function that the Tony's acoustic challenge daily challenges have in his world. And that's one of the tenets, that's one of the, the foundations of Tony's Acoustic Challenge. Every time you log in, there is a new daily, daily challenge waiting for you. So you simply log in, press start, boom, you're playing something. And it kind of kicks off your routine. And it was really great to hear the effect that it has had on Eric's guitar journey and what it has helped him develop. Not only skill-wise, but it's also sparked some memories for him. Here's what he had to say. You know, doing the challenges of have, have really helped me with, you know, some of the exercises have really helped me with, with accuracy. Um, and and I've, hmm. I've found that the, um, you know, playing them some of them as fast as i can and, and there are some that i could get get up to you know two two times the speed you know have helped me with uh, the speed as well so um the, the journey has been has been successful so far and i'm still enjoying it so many things that I've, I've i've heard on the on the daily challenges that remind me of bits and pieces of songs from from uh you know that i grew up with like uh one of the exercises you know, it kind of reminded me of a tune by Aerosmith off of their Get Your Wings album. And I was like, oh, wow, that's kind of cool. <laughs> There's one more thing that I wanted to share from Eric and I's talk. And that is something that all guitar players fear, hand injuries. Eric had a hand injury. And instead of saying, I can't play the guitar, I got to put it away. He shifted his goal to match his ability. Yes, he had a finger injury, but he was able to say, you know what? 
I might not be able to do what I was doing before, but this could help me turn a new leaf. Here's what he decided to work on after he couldn't fret so well anymore. I was doing some landscaping work and, and smashed my my, uh, my pointer finger between two rocks. And so I looked at it and it was, it was, oh. it was bleeding bad. And I was like, oh my gosh, you know, this is gonna, this, this you know, what am I gonna do? And, and so, you know, I used your positive mental attitude force and I said, all right, well, look, I'm gonna learn how to play, you know, slide guitar. Huge thanks to Eric for sharing some pieces of his guitar journey with all of us. Now, speaking of the TAC family, it's time to see what they're working on today. So go ahead and grab your guitar. The TAC family works on a daily challenge every single day of the week. On Mondays, it's a technique challenge. Tuesdays, a guitar lick challenge. Wednesdays, an improvisation challenge. Thursdays, a rhythm guitar challenge. And Fridays, a chord transition challenge. It is Tuesday. They are working on a guitar lick, and here's what they're working on. Your guitar lick challenge for today is entitled Two Pad Stack. In my mind, nothing beats a hockey goalie doing a two pad stack to stop a puck. Carey Price, we're spectacular. This one's better. Wow. It's quite simply amazing, and it reminds me of old-time hockey. Speaking of hockey, that's the theme within Tony's Acoustic Challenge this week. All of the challenges are named as a tribute to hockey goalies. You've got shutout, you've got puck stopper, glove save and a butte, and of course, two pad stack. But there is an underlying musical theme as well, and that is minimalism when playing the blues. Not only minimalism when playing the blues, but using the dead thumb while playing the blues to kind of keep that bass pedaling throughout, to create kind of a, a drone, if you will. In fact, this week in Tony's Acoustic Challenge is kind of like the gateway to Mississippi Hill Country Blues. We're going to be using a lot of drones this week, and that's one of the signatures of that style. If you've never heard Mississippi Hill Country Blues, you're going to want to check out Jesse May Hemphill. It's a great place to start. Okay, here's how today's lick sounds. This lick is not that difficult. It's actually pretty easy to play, but don't let that deceive you. Just because it's easy, just because it's simple, doesn't make it any less powerful. In fact, when you apply this in the correct musical context, it's extremely powerful. And I'm gonna show you that today. Now, if you wanna learn this note for note, TAC fam, go ahead and log in, click Start Challenge on your homepage, and boom, you'll go right to the teaching video. Once you go through that, you can move to the play along video, pick a speed that suits where you're at currently. Also, don't forget to click on that tab icon in the lower right hand corner. That'll allow you to pull up the tab in a new window so you can watch the tab and follow right along with me. Okay, this particular lick, yes, it's easy. So what is it good for? Well, you don't always have to machine gun notes everywhere for something to be effective. In fact, oftentimes the more space you integrate, the more potent what you play is. So there are two scenarios that I want to apply this lick to. And the first is just the lick itself as a repeated phrase. It's a wonderful two measure phrase that you can continue to repeat over an E chord that creates this sense of rhythmic drive. I'm going to go ahead and loop it so you can hear what that sounds like. So that's the lick as a repeated phrase. This riff that contains this rhythmic momentum, especially with that drone kind of pulsing the bass or pedaling the bass. And you might be thinking, okay, well, that, that's cool. It's just the, just the lick repeated, but I'm still not seeing how useful it is. Okay, well, let me bring you to the second scenario. This is for when you're playing a 12 bar blues. You can use this as a fill. It's a two measure fill that adds a ton of depth to just a standard 12 bar blues. Let me go ahead and play through it so you can see it as an example.
So as you can see, it really does break up a standard 12 bar blues. It just creates a nice fill and kind of creates some, some movement within the chord progression. Okay, so I hope you dug this and I hope that you're able to take this lick and apply it to your own playing and ultimately integrate it so that it becomes, well, yours. Now, before I let you go, I do want to remind you of one thing. Even though this lick is relatively simple, it's still okay to break it down. Maybe this is brand new for you. Breaking things down is okay. Breaking things down is encouraged. I think a lot of times us guitar players can find ourselves in, well, in some hot water because we look at something we want to learn and then we look at it as a whole. We never break it down. We just see it as it is, the end product, if you will, and we think that we should be able to pick up the guitar and play the end product right away. That's not the case. I want you to take little bites at a time, take little steps. You know what that, that classic phrase, you know, you, you gotta walk before you run. It's the same idea here. So for example, with something like this, you might just say, okay, I'm gonna get the thumb. I'm just gonna get the thumb and play that nice and steady. So you would just do that. You'd play the one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And once you feel comfortable with that, you might say, okay, well, I wanna get the lay of the land when it comes to those higher notes, those quote unquote melody notes. So you would just play those. just get comfortable fretting those. And then maybe the pinch, pinching two strings at once, at once is a new technique for you. If that's the case, then just practice those on the high E string. So even with a lick that's this simple, that seems this easy, there are so many different chunks you can break it down into so that you get it and you can get the most benefit out of it. So we have a technique chunk, we have the actual notes, the, the melody, we have the rhythm, there are so many pieces. So I wanna encourage you, when you're learning something new, be it this lick or something else in your guitar journey, go ahead and break it down to, uh, to the smallest pieces that, well, work for you. Open wide, it's second dose time. It's time for your second dose of acoustic news you can use. And we're gonna kick things off with a follow-up to our guessing game. You remember that picture I showed you? In case you need to jog your memory, here it is again. Now, I asked you who this was. And I thought to myself, when I first saw this picture, I had no clue. I didn't even have a clue that it was a musician. But upon further reading, this is Chris Stapleton. Yes, this is Chris Stapleton, and it was fascinating to me not only to, to realize that he played football, but to realize that he started guitar at 12 and only started taking music seriously in college. I don't know why that's fascinating to me, but it certainly is. And it's a really, it really is a huge indicator that you know, I think oftentimes the common myth is that, oh, you have to spend a lifetime playing guitar to quote unquote, get good or quote unquote, get any traction. And that's not true. He started in college. And if you love something, you do it to reference that Tony Rice quote again. So uh, it's very clear that Chris loved the guitar. He developed into a wonderful hit making uh, singer and songwriter and one of my personal favorite performers. Um, just a, a mesmerizing performer, to be quite honest. So yes, that's Chris Stapleton. Uh, if you got that right, go ahead and uh, give yourself a, a pat on the back. Now, I'm just paging through here. Oh, okay, yes, the final story is uh, maybe less of a story, uh, more of something I wanna show you to give you some ideas uh, in terms of uh, what to dress for for Halloween or what to dress as for Halloween next year. Now, these costume ideas come from Reverb and not only are they indicating what you should wear, they're also indicating what guitar gear you should buy which is exactly why I wanted to share it with you. So let's go ahead and go through some of these. Uh, you've got, uh, the first one that comes up is Jack White. So you get the guitar, you get the outfit, you get the pedals. And then next up we have Phoebe Bridgers, amp, pedal, guitar, skeleton outfit. You got Prince, all the boss pedals, the rad guitar. Uh, next up, Kurt Cobain, the signature glasses, the signature Martin. And then you've got Robert Smith, which I believe he's from The Cure, not sure. St. Vincent, haven't heard much of her, but all the gear is there. Jimi Hendrix, uh, very clear, you need a flying V and a fuzz face and a Marshall. Uh, Billy Corgan, familiar with him from the Smashing Pumpkins. And there you have it, the rundown for Halloween costume ideas uh, for next year. Not only, again, what to wear, but also 
what guitar gear to buy. Probably the most important piece of that. So you've got a whole year. You can accumulate the gear and then get the outfit and boom, you got yourself a hell of a, a Halloween costume idea. And on those uh, spooky notes, uh, not really spooky, but Halloween infused notes, I think it's a great time to wrap up the Acoustic Tuesday show for today. But of course, we have to take a sneak peek into next week. And next week, I'm gonna talk about the best instrumental albums of all time. I feel like this is gonna be a very timely episode because, you know, uh, the holidays are coming. And quite honestly, we're gonna get sick of Christmas music. We're just gonna get sick of it. Uh, it's gonna be in every department store. It's gonna be in Target. It's gonna be in the grocery store. It's gonna be in Walmart. It's gonna be at Kohl's. It's gonna be wherever you shop. You won't be able to escape it. And you're gonna need a palate cleanser. So I'm gonna share with you the best instrumental albums of all time. Well, first and foremost, because you're gonna need a palate cleanser, but also because you can sneak these albums in during your holiday parties, and the, the folks there will be none the wiser. It'll be something that you can sit back and say, this isn't holiday music, I love it, but you all think it is holiday music. Anyways, I think it's gonna be a great, a great time to release this episode. Uh, I'm excited because I have been digging through tons of instrumental albums and I've found some real gems that I can guarantee you've never heard of. But, but we have to wait until next week. Yes, that's happening next week on the Acoustic Tuesday show. Remember, you can catch Acoustic Tuesday every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. And uh, with that, I should remind you of one last thing. Your guitar success, however you define it, is directly related to your guitar routine. So please invest the time in developing your guitar routine and make sure to have fun every single day that you play. Yes, indeed, fun should be your top priority because as Tony Rice says, if you love what you do, you're gonna do it. If you don't love it, you're not gonna do it. So have some fun, love the guitar, and do it. Play guitar. <laughs> and on those notes, thank you so much for spending your time with me today. Thank you for being a guitar geek, and I'll see you next Tuesday on the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Cheers, guitar geeks unite.